Well, hello, hello, hello. And thank you for reaching out to us and having us on your mind for this very important process. Selecting your surgeon is extremely important and I really want you to take your time to do your due diligence and your homework and find someone who has a real or the same aesthetic sense as you do and whose results you tend to like. So I really appreciate you reaching out to us and I understand that at this point you are interested in what we call the BBL, also known as fat grafting to the buttock or just simply fat transfer. Well, this procedure is becoming one of the most popular procedures in the world. Miami is like a mini Mecca for this procedure. I mean, just to give you an idea, let me put it in perspective. Here's the way it goes. In the United States, we perform about 27,000 of these procedures alone. Guess how many Miami does? Miami does 14,000. That's more than half. Woo, we rock in Miami. So the BBL, fat grafting or fat transfer, or however you want to call it, is removing fat from these pesty, unwanted areas that we're dying to get rid of and it's just really hard. And that's like areas like the stomach, the waist, maybe the inner legs, maybe the outer legs, or any other area where you might have fat. And then I take that fat, I process it, and then I transfer it to the buttocks. As an aside, I can put it wherever you want. I can put it in the breast, I can put it in the biceps, the triceps, the shoulders, that's for guys. And in women, I can put it in the calf and even the private parts. That is becoming really popular because it can stimulate sexual orgasms, but more about that later. Right now, let's talk about the butt. If I can't get to all the areas from the liposuction because we do have limits as to how much we can remove for your safety, Listen, you can always come back and do a second surgery later on down the road, and that's usually about three months later, but that's only if we have to. Fat crafting is not really just about size. There's other components to it that I think are a priority, and that's to make it prettier, perkier, more voluptuous, and just give it a nice shape. Once I got the shape, now I can work on the size. I mean, it does no good really to make a buttock that is struggling to make the top 40 list of pretty butts and just make that butt bigger. I mean, I want to make it prettier first, shapelier first, and then I'm going to make it bigger. I mean, imagine it's like trying to dress me up first and then trying to make me pretty after that. Well, I say heck no to that. I'll say, why don't you make me look like Brad Pitt and then dress me up? Now that's what I'm talking about. Now, I do have limitations in what I can do, and this is governed by your anatomy, your physiology, your genetics, and the skin and the fat characteristics that you have. So my hands are limited sometimes in what I can do. Because remember, I'm gonna take fat from your stomach, your waist, your back, maybe the inner legs, wherever I can find the fat. But here are the limitations that I have, and there's four of them. So let's go through them so that you can understand why sometimes I can't get the result that we want. First of all, not all the fat's gonna live some of it disappears. On the average, I get about 50 to 60% of the fat to survive. We could never predict how much fat is gonna stay in your particular case because it has to do with physiology, genetics, etc., etc. But you gotta give me six months to a year to see how much of it did stay. So I usually keep 50 to 60% and some people more, some less. Only in about 10 to 12% of people do they come back because they wanna have just a little bit more or they wanna remove a little bit more fat. So the other uh, limitation that I have is that there's two rules in Florida for liposuction and how much we can remove. The first rule is very simple. If you're only doing liposuction, you can remove up to four liters of fat. That's fabulous. Four liters of fat only. However, if you make an incision, like a tummy tuck, a rhinoplasty, breast augmentation, hair transplants, anything that has to do with cutting, then I can only remove one liter. And in some cases that might limit me. So when we're concentrating on the buttock, we can usually start off with liposuction, transfer that fat to the buttock, and then we're gonna give it six months to a year to see how much of it stays. The third limitation that I've got has to do with your genetics and how your skin and fat characteristics apply to you. So for example, sometimes when I do the liposuction, that skin is so good, it's got dermal thickness, it tends to retract back, it's very, uh, and when it does retract back, it looks excellent. It looks like you never had liposuction, but other skin is really floppy and loose, kind of like having a really loose shirt and then you lose more weight. 
and it just does not look good at all and that skin needs to come out and eventually you've got to cut it out and do things like a tummy tuck or a body lift or whatever it may be. But your skin characteristics will influence what I can do. Some skin is very, very sensitive and if it's sensitive, you're more propensed to burns, discoloration, so I've got to be very limited. So sometimes I got to leave more fat than you want me to leave. The other thing that will limit me is your genetic fat. Why is that? Because some fat is soft like butter, some fat is hard like concrete, and you're going to make me work big time. I mean, I'm going to sweat during that case. When that fat is that hard, I it is really hard to get it out. I mean, really hard to get it out. So. And the more you spend time in an area trying to get it out, the more risk of burns, irregularities, fibrosis, all these kind of things that we really got to try to avoid. So I got to back off a little bit and not be as aggressive. Also, your fat could leave irregularities, meaning that whenever I pass that cannula through it, it could be like water where I pull it in and pull it out and it leaves no trails. Or it could be like cheese where I put it in there and then it leaves a hole in there. So you could see the track marks from the cannula. That's no bueno either. So what I've got to do is back off in those cases and leave a little bit more fat than I would have liked to. So bottom line is that I don't know how much fat I can remove until I'm there. I am limited by the four liters, but I might be even limited because of the fact that your body and your fat characteristics don't allow me to remove any more fat than I already did. We never know any of these situations until we're in surgery. All right, now comes the last one. And that's if you're bloody. Some people are very bloody when I'm doing the liposuction, even though I put special fluid to cut down on the bleeding. We will do uh, testing beforehand to make sure that your blood studies are okay, your blood clotting's okay, but oftentimes, even if these results are normal, we can still have bloody uh, aspirates when we're in surgery. In those cases, I've got to really slow down and I've got to take my time and sometimes I can't continue on with the procedure depending on how bloody you are. Sometimes we can come back and do more liposuction later, but unfortunately that carries its own cost. As a matter of fact, some people can be very bloody and at that point you might even need blood transfusions. Those things can happen. So we never know about your bleeding tendencies. So to summarize these four points, uh, number one, remember, not all the fat's going to stay. I usually keep about 50 to 60% of what I'm putting in there, and some people more, some it's less, but that's kind of like my average. And I can't predict how much it's going to stay. So I got to put all the fat in there, I put it in until the body says I'm full or it squirts back at me, and then I got to stop because there's no more room to put it in, and then I got to give it six months to a year to see how much stayed. That's kind of out of our hands. Number two is the state regulations that we have. Remember. Uh, there's two rules. There's the four liter rule where if I'm only doing liposuction, I can remove up to four liters. If I'm doing any kind of cutting procedure, it's one liter. Limitation number three is your skin and fat characteristics and genetics. Does the fat leave irregularities? Is the fat lumpy and uh, clumpy? Does your skin retract well or does it want to just shrivel up and wrinkle? These are all the things that are out of our control and we don't know until you're in surgery. And finally, number quattro, that is your bleeding tendencies. Even though your labs are okay, you may have a tendency to bleed a little bit more than usual. That's why we ask you to stop aspirin, vitamin E, and all these blood thinning kind of things before your surgery. So let's talk about size and expectations on this. It'll never be too big. It's not like the Michael Jackson nose where everybody freaks out and goes, oh my God, I'm really nervous about it. That took like 30 surgeries to get done. So to get a really big buttock, that takes usually several surgeries. It's not just one. So what I do is that I'll take your fat, I'll purify it, get it ready, and then I transfer it to the buttock until it either says I'm full, and it does that by either squirting fat back at me, or uh, I can't put any more in there, So, or I run out of fat. So when those things happen, I'm done, and I can't do any more. The majority of the fat is going to reshape your buttock, and then the rest of it goes to make it bigger. But again, I won't know how much is going to stay for at least six months to a year. On occasions, people already know that they want a bigger butt and they can come back at about three months after the first surgery and do it a little bit more if they want to. But bottom line is that to get those really big butts, that's more than one surgery. So our focus will be a lot on reshaping, uh, recontouring, making it pretty perky and giving you some volume if you do want it. 
So bottom line, I'm limited by your anatomy as to how big I can make the buttock because the skin only stretches so much. I mean, there's only so much you can put in a drawer right after that it spills over, same thing with the body. So I'll fill it up as much as I can. I'll give it six months, see how much stays, and then we go from there. Surgery will take me two hours. It's done under general anesthesia. I do not do it under local. I don't like it. I need to perform my artistry and I need you to be under general anesthesia. So it's gonna be about two hours of surgery. I will leave drains in because the body produces fluid. Those drains stay in for five to seven days. I'll also put you in a garment that day and you're gonna wear it for about a month. Now, obviously you take it off to shower or go to the bathroom, but you're gonna wear it for an entire month. Getting back to work will be about 10 days. Feeling normal is a month. Your homework, and I'm giving you some homework, is for one month to protect that butt like gold. How are you gonna do that? Very easy. You're gonna sleep on your stomach or your side. And when I say your side, I mean like your hip bone area, like you're hugging your husband or the neighbor or the pool guy, you pick. But you're gonna hide them, you're gonna hug them. And the next thing is whenever you're sitting, you can sit all day long, you can fly back, you can drive, you can sit in front of the computer, you can do whatever you wanna do all day long, not a problem, just put a pillow underneath your legs. And it's gonna take six months to see your results. And it's one month to work out. So here's where it gets really easy because any question you ask me, my answer is gonna be a month. So for example, how long do I wear the garment for? One month. How long do I wait before I can work out? One month. How long before I feel normal? One month. How long to protect the butt like gold for? By sitting on a pillow and by sleeping on my side or my stomach? One month. So now we gotta give it six months and see how much of it really stayed. There's two other things that I'm talking to everybody about when I'm doing BBLs that are extra, but I'm really liking them a lot. Number one, it's called J plasma, J as in John, plasma. Look it up on YouTube and you're gonna see uh, this laser type technology that's really helping me contract the skin and gives me a tighter look. I'm really like that one a lot. All right, so the second thing that I'm really liking a lot, and you might want to listen up because this has to do with pain, the medicine is called Expiro, and I inject it into the tissues during surgery. It can only be done during surgery. It's not an injection in the shoulders or anything like that. I put it inside of your tissues where I've done the liposuction, and this Expiro decreases the pain by almost 80% for the entire process of recovery. It's tremendous. People are loving it. So it's something that I would suggest you get if you want to. So these two things I'm totally, totally, totally loving. I mean, I really believe them. It gives me a tighter look and then you got an 80% reduction in pain, which to me would be very important, but it's totally up to you. Talk to your coordinators and get some price quotes on those things and see if you really want to do it or not. I really look forward to seeing you and it's been a pleasure talking to you.